Live from Orlando, Florida, you're now listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Orlando Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Ozone Podcast brought to you by DraftKings and part of the Basketball Podcast Network. We are your hosts, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is Friday, August 29th, and in today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about more Paulo Bancaro. There's never enough conversation around Paulo Bancaro. Just signed a new endorsement deal. We're going to get into more details about that in a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about Terrence Ross's recent comments. Um, and then we took some mailbag questions. So we we asked for some questions from out in the social media world, um, and we'll kind of review some of those. But before we get into that, um, definitely want to give a quick shout out to our HQ officers over in our Patreon, WP Creates, Court Cousins, Stephen Cameron, Dan Moore, Casey Wood, Finn's Fan for Life, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Mr. Mikey Zico, Dylan Holden, Yadi, and Eric Randall. Um Patreon, where we're gonna have our um, our roundtable going on next week. We have a lot, a lot of great things that are planned, so we're really excited. If you haven't already joined, um, it's is a great community that a great community that we have. We have our uh, group chat that we have on a daily basis, where we're really covering all of all things NBA, Orlando Magic, so a lot of amazing stuff. Um, and we're we're gonna announce our giveaway as well. So Al, you want to run through that real quick? Let's do it. So it took us a little bit longer than expected. We were kind of make it a little more dramatic than it needed to be. Um, but yeah, we have. So if you think back to the draft, we had said, hey, we're going to do two giveaways. We're going to start with a rookie jersey. Whoever that rookie is going to be, you get that jersey. So officially, we have the, the winner. We did the drawing last night. Um, so we are happy to announce that Yadi is our winner for the Paolo Bancaro jersey. Um, hey. He doesn't know this. We're recording this. So he has no idea this is happening. So by the way, we're gonna, we're gonna wait for him to to listen to it. <laughs> Let's see if he listens. Yeah, we, we won't even say it in the group chat yet until until uh, he hears this. But yeah, so Yadi will be receiving a uh, Paolo Banquero jersey of his choice. Uh, I'm gonna go next week and pick it up at the team store, and that'll be on its way. So that's the first one. The second one was a Franz Wagner signed uh, or autographed photo. Uh, so the winner for that one is Anthony. You want to say that one? Fence fan for life. Fence fans, fans for life. Congratulations, guys! So we have our first two winners. Our goal is to do a lot more giveaways. So if you are not yet on our Patreon, you're not yet following us on our social media accounts, please do. We're giving away a bunch of stuff throughout the year: tickets to games, jerseys, uh, signed memorabilia. So. A lot of stuff to come as the season approaches. This is the quiet time right now. We have we have done how a lot of things going on, but that will change as the season approaches. Uh, but again, thank you guys for your support, and we look forward to an amazing season here coming up. Absolutely. Now let's get into some basketball talk. All right. So I have a question for you because I I think that something that's transpired within the last week is something that I don't think we've ever seen in the world before, which is Chuma Okiki playing in a pro-am wearing a polo underneath his jersey which i will say if this was if this was a marketing uh strategy then this man killed it because this was like the talk of the town which was amazing i even love the fact that it kind of coincides with the name of the team that we, he was representing which is you know street execs so the fact that he was wearing a polo underneath is is amazing. It wasn't just any random polo. It's it, it was a it was a, a blue polo, so representing the magic a little bit. But my my question to you, Al, is would you ever play basketball in a polo? Like it would you would you ever find yourself in a situation that you would rock a polo underneath a jersey? Listen, that's that's a first for me um it reminds me of i'm not sure if you were guilty of this like if you had days where you went to high school and you were like i don't want to be a part of gym class today they're doing golf i don't want to do that and you act as sick or you just didn't partake in the stuff that was going on but then they realized hey today instead we're going to go ahead and play basketball you're like oh snap and you just jumped in all of a sudden so that kind of reminded me of that like i don't think chuma went to this event thinking i'm gonna play and then he's like actually i'll dress up and play um 
again, not my outfit that I would choose for sure on a, on a, on a regular basis. But hey, man, if I'm out there and some of my friends want to play ball and I'm just happy to be wearing a polo, I guess I'll play. But that was a first for me for sure. How about you? I, I, I have questions. Like, was it was it cotton? Was it <laughs> was it dry fit? Like these <laughs> these are important. I, I could see myself <laughs> rocking a dry fit polo underneath the jersey. I can see that happening. And I think that kind of sends out a message. Also, it's kind of like, yo, I'm, I'm coming out here and it's all business. <laughs> Not only did he rock a polo. But all the buttons were buttoned up also. Like this dude was was serious, he was ready to go. And he was balling out there. So it was it's like, what are you gonna what are you gonna say to Chuma? Like what what are you gonna say to him? All I can say is it's the most Chuma thing I've ever seen, man. This kid is again, we, we keep hearing how funny he is in the locker room. We haven't really seen it too much. Like Cole Anthony, we know he, he lets it out there. We get to see who he is. Chuma is so reserved and so quiet, but everything we hear is that he's this hilarious guy in the locker room. I can see why, because if he's doing things like this on the regular, I mean, my goodness. I mean, he's he's from Georgia. Maybe it's a Georgia thing. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I remember back in the day, people rocked their uh, their their jersey backwards. It was a thing for a little while. True. Um, polo underneath the jersey is definitely a new one. I, I, don't, I don't think I would have the courage to be able to do that. Like, it, If you're going to rock a polo under a jersey, then you, you got to be easily the best player on the floor. Like, easily. Like by far, like no one, no one should be able to compete with you. And he definitely was. So I think that that's why he got away with it. But um, now we know. And next time we play ball in person, whenever that may be, if our knees allow us to, now you know. I want to see you in a dry fit polo <laughs> polo shirt. It might, it might happen. I really need to know. We need to find that. We need to do some, some, some research to find out exactly what type of material. Because I think, <laughs> I do think that's important. Because if it was cotton polyester, then do what are you doing? But if it's dry fit, I guess yeah, it works. Not too yeah. bad, right? Yeah, not too bad. All right, and now kind of moving forward, Terrence Ross, in one of his recent podcasts, he he made a comment, a very positive comment about the Orlando Magic. Not saying that this is surprising because for the most part, he's been really positive. But from what we've heard in the past, it seemed like he was really done with the Orlando Magic. Um, he said everything we didn't have a season or two ago, we have. We could go to the playoffs. He also added he does not know where things stand on his situation with the team. So if you haven't heard um, the full conversation that he had, you know, he's he's he was shooting around and kind of just thinking to himself like, man, like we we could really we could really make noise. We can really do damage and kind of just thinking how, you know, the players that are around him all now the addition of Paolo, like he really feels like this team can be a lot better um, than what we've seen before in the past. And I think for a player like Terrence Ross, what he didn't want, in my opinion, this is me just speaking on on his behalf, but I think what he didn't want is he didn't want another season to go by where he's not he's not playing meaningful basketball. And I think for a player in Terrence Ross's situation, that has to be so important for him because he's at the point where right now would be considered his prime time, right, where he's able to play the best basketball that, that he could play. And we don't want that to go to waste. But I think that there might be a part of him now where it's kind of like, with this team it, it wouldn't go to waste like there, there there could be really something special um and i know that you heard the same conversation did you did you take anything from that did you kind of take everything the same way i mean a, a weird takeaway for me is the fact that the front office really hasn't really talked to him you know i would have thought that draft went through and nothing happened free agency went through and nothing happened you would have that one-on-one -on -one with terrence and be like hey man hang in there you're either coming back or if something's happening, we'll let you know with plenty of time. But it seems like the Magic just keep this guy out of the loop completely, which is kind of surprising. Um, it seems like with Vooch and AG and Fournier, there was always talks. And he, the front office always understood kind of where they wanted to go, the best situation where they wanted to be. And with Terrence, that hasn't really been the case. So it kind of leads me to believe that do they want him around? And that's just, that's just what it is. It's nothing to talk about. You're going to be back. You're going to be a vet in our locker room. And, you know, you're going to fight for your minutes. But... That was kind of, of a weird takeaway for me. Um, other than that, he's picking facts, right? So we know that this team is going to be much better next season. Um, the hype that we're seeing, you know, from from getting Paolo into our team now, the younger guys developing, a healthy J.I., a healthy Markel, obviously the hype that we all have as Magic fans is for a reason. I think we, we're forgetting that in the locker room, that's also happening. You know, you cannot tell me that Wendell is not happy to see J.I. coming back and helping him out on defense. Um People don't want to play with Markel and get easy looks 
Um, so I think it's, it's a contagious feeling. And it's, again, it's great to see that in the locker room is happening as well, because if we're feeling it, they're feeling it too. Yeah. I mean, just thinking from the perspective of the front office, I mean, it would, it would make a whole lot of sense for them to want to keep Terrence Ross, whatever you trade Terrence Ross for, if you, if you are able to finally, you know, decide on a, on a move for Terrence Ross, unless you're packaging Terrence Ross, you're not going to get back the same thing that you're sending out. Just the val the value really isn't there for, for a player like Terrence Ross. So yeah, cool. You trade Terrence Ross, but what are you going to do? Get a second round pick for him. If it, if it's just like, you know, a, a simple trade, just to move them. It, we've seen that the magic really don't do anything with second round picks where, man, thank God we finally decided to use it on Houston. But other than that, what have we really done with it? I think that a player like Terrence Ross, who is a professional, who has his positive positive energy about him, and oh by the way, he can shoot, you know, the the life out of the basketball. Like, why would you want to move him? And I think that that may be part of the reason why there's not a conversation. I, I think that they really, really like Terrence Ross to the point that they don't they don't want to lose him just yet. And if you lose him from a contract, I would be okay with letting him walk. And if he doesn't want to be here anymore, pick the team that you want to go to in free agency. But for right now. Be the positive veteran in the locker room because he he does have that voice. He does have that that sway that he's able to do a lot of good um, on the team than us just bringing some random veteran from the outside to now be you know acclimated with the team that we have. So from a front office perspective, don't say anything, Terrence Ross. Keep, keep him on the roster, and when it's time for when it's time to let him walk, then let him walk. I agree, a hundred percent. I mean, the, the only reason that that I would think like, hey, let him go, is if he was a bad individual in the locker room that's affecting the chemistry, things like that. From everything that we can see, it's the opposite. This guy is engaged with his teammates. We see Mo Bamba his house all the time. We've seen Cole Anthony his house. So, this guy is embracing the the young guys. Um, I think if he was a little more adamant about leaving, and you know, you know, kind of what what we saw from him. Earlier last season, if you remember, we were like, wait, this is not Terrence Ross. He's not smiling out there. He's not having fun on the court. We saw it for a few weeks, and then he kind of transformed and kind of bought into things. Um, so I'm not sure if that has to do with the front office, if that has to do with coach mostly. But whoever got to his head and said, hey, we need you to be a vet and to be a good influence, that worked. Um, so it's, it's good to see that he doesn't have to leave Orlando to be competing for a playoff spot and that he's seen that that can happen in here. Um, now it's time to go out there and do it. That's what we're ready for. Yeah, I know that the front office, they don't want to put, you know, anything out there as a, as an actual verbal commitment on a goal. But you have to imagine that if you're if you're coach most, if you're if you're any of the players that play in is is definitely the the minimum goal. And and I don't even think that it's it's a goal. It should be the expectation whether or not you believe this team is good enough to be able to do that. I understand that we're coming from a, a 22 win season last season to be able to get into the play and we would have to make a massive jump. But even if we don't reach that goal, it should still be something that they're they're obviously shooting for. I don't I don't think that tanking should be even in the in in the thought process of the Magic front office. Now, <clears throat> right now there's really not a whole lot of you know, basketball content. We're in that weird middle where there's not a whole lot going on. Except, oh, by the way, there's a lot of content right now for Paolo Pancaro, which is amazing, right? So it was just announced um, earlier today. We're recording this on Thursday, releasing on Friday. But it was just announced earlier today that Paolo Pancaro just signed officially an endorsement deal with the Jordan brand. We talked about it last on our last episode. What are your thoughts on that? Exciting. That, that automatically gets you more exposure, right? Anytime you see MJ in any basketball team, automatically you get more eyes. You think about the younger guys that have signed with, with Jordan recently, Jason Tatum, Zion, um, Lucas, another one. So, I mean, some really good players. If we can say that we're adding to our team a guy of that caliber, my goodness, it's exciting. I know we know it. It's a young guy with a lot of potential, but to kind of put the two realization like man like, we have that kind of talent in our roster now leading the way it's exciting um for him i'm hoping there's a, a signature shoe deal in there some way somehow um i know for sure i'll be picking up whatever he's wearing next season uh with Ma uh, magic colorways but i think it's exciting i think it's a great brand to represent him the money will be great and the exposure to orlando will be even better so I i'm all for it 
I think it's a good fit. Um, I can't say that I'm crazy about the uh, the recent Jordan brand shoes that have come out. Um, I wasn't a fan of the Zions. I thought the Why Nots from Westbrooks, they they looked all right. Luka Doncic, they're okay. But for the most part, I'm not like, wow. Like, I've never been like, oh, I need to get those. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm now biased. That would be something that I would 100% want to get. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see what it is that they come up with. Um, I think what's great is that I feel like it's great that it's official, but we he's already been kind of hinting that he was kind of going that route with the Jordan brand. When he had his photo shoot, he had, um, I believe they were the Luka Doncic's. Um, and then on top of that, he one of the poses that he had was the Jordan brand pose. So it's, it's good to see that it's finally official. And I think that would be a good fit. I, I think that for the most part, I can't think of a player that is that that has an endorsement deal with Jordan that doesn't have their own signature shoe. I can't think of a player on the top of my head. No, I, Nothing I can't that either. Comes to mind. Mm-mm. Yeah, but and pa- Paula was also just recently on all the smoke podcast, and I think that what's great about all the smoke podcasts is is the fact that I feel like we got to know Paula a little bit more that we haven't gotten in other interviews. One of the main things is kind of like how he met Mike Miller which I thought was great. So if you haven't listened to the podcast, pretty much when Mike Miller was working with Penny Hardaway in Memphis, he tried to recruit Paolo. And at the time, people were kind of viewing him as a player that would just go to Washington because his his, his parents went to Washington and he was from that area. And he was one of the first teams outside of that area that really offered him a contract or, excuse me, a, a scholarship. And I think that that was a, a unique way of kind of building a relationship because – as we know, Mike Miller ended up leaving um, Memphis and then he started his own agency, but he was still one of the first ones to reach out. So it also made me wonder like, man, if, and I, I don't know if the timeline really fits, but imagine if somehow, you know, Mike Miller was able to kind of seal the deal. And instead of going to Duke, you know, Paolo ends up going to Memphis. Do you think that would have changed anything with Paolo as a player? Do you feel like a college really has that much power for a player as talented as Paolo Bancaro? I don't think talent-wise it would have impacted anything, right? I think he would have still been a top three pick in the draft. But you can't deny the fact that the exposure that you get with Duke playing for Coach K in his last season, that adds value automatically, right? He made it to the Final Four. Would he have made it with Memphis? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. So... I think for sure the impact that it had going to Duke, uh, the branding that comes with it, the marketing, the marketing, all the games on ESPN that you get, um, definitely helped. Um, so I think it definitely worked out for him. Yeah, I think from a pressure standpoint, yeah, I don't, I don't think you can really compare the two, because with with Coach K is the the last season by far going to go down as one of the best collegiate coaches in the NCAA. Uh, the the amount of alumni that were a part of just about almost every game like it's it's you you can't deny that's a different level and i think that <clears throat> hit the pressure that he received his first year at duke allows his transition to be the number one pick to now the nba to at least be an, an easy transition obviously it's it's still gonna it's the nba so I, i'm sure that at some point there's gonna be you know that that adjustment period but I think at the very least, the transition is going to be a lot easier for him. Um, but I, I agree. Maybe maybe nothing happens. But I think that one of the other takeaways that we can get from that podcast is the fact that he was talking about how, you know, his uh, one of the questions that were asked is who does he feel like he molds his game after? Names that were thrown out were LeBron, were Melo, a little bit of Tatum. And I think that it's interesting to hear him say those things because if you remember – before the draft and when we're all looking at like who should we pick oh this this player comp is this person this player comp is that person we weren't talking lebron and mellow we were talking you know julius Randle, carlos <laughs> boozer like these were the players that they were comparing paolo to and it's it's crazy because now that we've seen just two summer leagues two summer league games that's it it's like people are starting to see, oh, yeah, I, I do see flashes of of Melo. Or we're not saying that Paolo is LeBron, but the body type is there, the way that he's able to move, the way that you know he's able to play make. You start seeing that, okay, 
he's definitely not on this side of the 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 Carlos Boozer and the Julius Randle. He's definitely in a in a different lane. And I think that's something that people can really, really be excited about. Was there anything else that you saw from that podcast that stood out to you? I think the the draft process. He kind of briefly touched upon it, how he really thought he was going to Houston. And then, uh, you know, kind of the last couple of days, um, he confirmed I didn't work out for the Magic. Uh, they kind of came out of nowhere and, and chose to draft me. I forgot the exact wording. I don't want to misquote him. Um, but basically, he said, like, it's like they realized that I was the best player. So they chose to, to pick me instead. Um, so, again, very unique. I know we, we will eventually one day find out what truly happened and why they went the way that the way they went with with Paolo. Um, but again, obviously, uh, just two summer league games, very little things we've seen so far. But from a marketing standpoint, from a player standpoint, I mean, this dude looks like he's ready to play in the NBA today. Whereas the other two that we were considering may need a little bit of time. So I think from that perspective, the Magic made the right move. So it's kind of cool to see what his thinking was through the process. Um, but yeah, other than that, just the fact that he wants to bring one into Orlando. He kept talking about that. Like us, he also thinks the Magic are ready for a jump. He talked about how this season coming up, he expects the Magic to be a much better team than they were last year. Um, so it's, it's good to hear those things. Um, a final takeaway for me is his leadership. Uh, Jackson talked about it briefly. He said, hey, uh, one thing that when he played the Iverson game, I guess in 2020, because of the pandemic, they canceled a bunch of those games they do for high schoolers and things like that. Um, and he saw him playing at this game with uh, the Iverson game that he put together. Mm -hmm. And what caught his attention was his leadership. The fact that he he basically took that that leadership approach to win the game, to be one of the best players out there. It's given me a new way of seeing Paolo. I never see him as a leader, never saw him as kind of like the guy that's gonna kind of be a vocal leader out there, but apparently he has that. We saw it in Summer League a little bit too. He, he took control and he wanted to win those games. Um, so again, another layer to him that I was not aware of, that if he can bring that to our team, he'll make us better again immediately. Yeah, he was also talking about some of the advice that he got from Allen Iverson and and kind of said how, you know, the main advice that he took from Allen Iverson is that to be more efficient, that when he gets to, you know, this stage, he has to be able to get to his spots and kind of, you know, eliminate all the extra stuff. And, you know, it, it really stood out to him because you're talking about Allen Iverson, the, the guy that's all about the extra stuff. And, and the fact that if, if a dude is six foot one and he's one of the best six foot one players to ever play the game, and he's telling you that you need to, you know, be more efficient, then you know you're you're going to listen to that. And I think that what makes what makes it so special is that there there's a lot of there's a lot of big names out there that are really really rooting for Paolo. And I think that when we when we talk about a player that has that it factor. I think we're really starting to see now all that if factors really um, unravel from Jordan Brand to him being on all the smoke. And I, and I get that being the number one pick kind of comes with that. Um, but I think that his his journey now in the NBA has already been so unique with the fact that the Orlando Magic handled the way that they drafted him to, to how he was able to really show out in, in summer league. And then now kind of jumping into it, if if we're able to really, really find a way to make this team get a major jump from last season, I, I feel like Paolo's going to be able to be really put on the map and he's going to be a, a big um, a big reason why we do so well. Um, I, we just really hope that this kind of transitions really into the NBA. Yeah, if it does, it's going to be exciting. That's for sure. Yeah. Now they did also confirm that he will be playing in the crossover pro am in Seattle this Saturday. And kind of from what we're leaning or what I've seen a little bit on, I know that Jordan, I know that Crawford was kind of mentioning that we may be able to see this game streamed. So there, there might be a way for us to be able to watch it. And I think that during a time period when there's nothing going on, at 11 a.m. on Saturday, we should be able to see a little bit more of Paolo Bancaro playing basketball. Hopefully, we see a little defense. That's what I'm hoping for. At least a, a little a little defense. Not anything like we saw the Blackhawks. That's going to be exciting, man. I know for sure any, any basketball content that we can get right now, we're trying to get. So the fact that we'll get to see him out there, more than likely dominated, right? Because this kid is going to dominate at that level. Um, it's just going to make us even more hyped for the season. So... It's going to be exciting. It won't be like France. France is going to be playing organized basketball, Team Germany. So he's going to play within that team uh, concept. 
this is going to be Paulo just showing out out there. I'm the number one pick of the draft. I'm a beast. Give me the ball. So wouldn't be surprised if he drops 30, 40, 50 points in that game. And then again, we're going to be drooling over here for October to get here. <laughs> yeah. Now, remember in the summer league where we watched two games of Paolo Mancaro and then that was it? And we heard the whole thing about, well, we want to see what the other players got. Right? You remember that? And then yep. there was a bunch of games where we got a chance to see what the other players got. And then the remaining two-way deal that we ended up, you know, signing Kevin Harris to wasn't on that team and was from another <laughs> summer league. <laughs> you remember that? I think I think it's crazy, man. What what do you think about the Orlando Magic, you know, adding a two-way player that wasn't on our summer league? Um, that I, I personally, I've, I'm sorry, I've, I just never heard of Kevin Harris. I've done a lot of research, all right? I'm very happy that the Orlando Magic decided to make that move. I, I like what I see from Kevin Harris. But is it is it interesting to you that the Magic decided to, to go that route and then end up just signing another player that had nothing to do with our summer league? I wonder if that means, like, hey, you know, there was not enough in our roster that we liked, so let's go out there and get somebody who we like better. Um, I wonder if the scouting team had been watching him for a few weeks, months, back to the G League days, and said, we want this kid in our roster. Um, not sure what the idea was, but it's kind of surprising that the, that this roster did not get filled up by a Magic Summer League member, or, as we'll talk about in a few minutes, someone currently in our roster, which is kind of surprising. So, not sure what it all means. We're going to see, but for sure, a, a kid that seems like it's a little more mature. I think he's 24, 25 years old, played four years in college, played for the G League, uh, for the Raptors team last season. Um, 14 points. Uh, I got the stats here. 5.6 rebounds, 1.5 steals, and he shot 40% from three-point range in five attempts. So one thing that I like about him, he plays hard. He is physical. He goes to the basket and tries to dunk on people. But at the same time, he plays a bit of defense and, again, shoots the ball well. Um, has some size to him. He can play the two or the three. So I think when you think about that, it kind of fits the mold of the wrap, uh, of the Magic, what we're trying to build in Orlando, kind of these lengthy guys that can kind of do it all. Um, again, I just don't know why they would go outside of the Summer League roster or our former G League guys. Uh, but again, ultimately, happy with the pickup. What about you during your research? What have you liked about the kid so far? Yeah, he's he's a shooter. And I think that when you take a look at his stats from his four years in college, every year he got better and better and better. Um, his four-year collegiate average, he averaged about 3.7 attempts and shot, what, about 30, up, up, above the 35% mark for the three-point line. And I think that his, his first season, he only – I think he only averaged his attempt was like at 1.9. So every year you see that he got better and better and better. And he had a really strong showing in summer league. Um, the the part that you're kind of questioning is, okay, this is another, another guard forward. Then you have, you know, Admiral Schofield and another guard forward. It's kind of like, what, what is the magic really trying to do? You know, I, and I think that one of the questions that we really have to ask ourselves is, um, and this was one of the questions that one of our Patreon members asked, but who who's going to be that odd man out? You know, there's there's already a, a, a what we feel like a lot of a lot of or not so much room at the four position at the four position, and then our guard positions also kind of stacked and full. When you take a look at the team, we're not expecting for 15 players to go out there and play every single game. Who do you feel is going to end up being that odd man out? I mean, if you ask me, it's going to come down to either a Terrence Ross trade. Although we just come from talking about the fact that we want him here. We don't want to get rid of him. But if the right trade comes along, so let's say Kevin Durant trade comes to fruition, Kyrie Irving, and you need his salary to make it work, and then we get a pick back for him, maybe a first rounder finally, like we've been wanting all along, maybe he's the guy that leaves. But if it isn't, and this is where the surprise factor comes in for me, the only logical guy would be Devin Kennedy because his contract's not guaranteed until January 31st, I believe. So it's the logical choice. My thinking is, though, really? You wouldn't want to keep him around even as a two-way player, a guy that, you know, won a championship in the G League, was a finals MVP, has been here, got injured playing for you, you brought him back, all this story with your, with your franchise, and then you're going to let him walk for nothing. So I don't know if it means that if that does end up being the case, then you make a decision and you may be waving at that point 
uh, one of the two ways that we currently have in keeping Kennedy on the team. Not sure, but as of today, I would say Kennedy would be that guy that would have to be um, cut just because there's no room for him. Yeah, and it's a shame because you you read some of the things that he puts out on social media. He talks about how excited he is for the season, how he's ready to work, and how he sees you know the team being successful. Um, it, it would be it would be, it's not something that I want I want him to be a part of the franchise, and that's the part that I was a little worried about because we're we're at the point where the Magic are going to have to make some decisions with the roster. And if you don't have any more two-way spots, and granted, you you can always make those adjustments at the two-way spot. But the last thing I'd want is like, all right, so we signed you last year towards the end. We gave you that multi-year contract, and then it's not guaranteed. So now now we're kind of you know deciding to go a different direction. And I think that you know if if there's one thing that we've said that the Orlando Magic have struggled with, and something that we need is that you can never have too much shooting. Magic had were one of the worst teams last season in shooting. You have a player like this that, yeah, may be the, the last player on the bench, but in the times of need, he's a shooter. So why wouldn't you want that around? Now, granted, we're not saying that, you know, Kevin Harris isn't a shooter because we clearly, you know, talked about his ability to shoot and, and that being a big strength for him. But I, I guess I, I would just love to see where the direction is. And I would imagine that once we get closer and closer to training camp, you know, we'll be able to kind of figure that out a little bit more. Um, towards the end of training camp once they start finalizing on the roster because what we know is you're not you're not going to because the way that i saw it was it was either going to be kennedy we thought about bobo and then if a trade does happen for terrence ross i don't believe it's terrence ross i do believe that if a move is made for t ross it will be closer to the nba trade deadline um i don't see bobo just because we if for that then why why did we offer him a contract to take him out of free agency. So it, it, you're right. The only logical choice that makes sense financially would be Devin Kennedy. But I do think that if it comes down to that, I, at least the fan in me believes that what you would do at that point is you make a decision, either Schofield or Harris. And you say, Hey, who do we want to keep as a two way? Because Kennedy deserves that, that spot. I don't think you would wave this kid and just say, Hey, thank you for everything. Go to Lakeland again. And, we may see you again later on in the season. That uh, personally, that wouldn't feel right, man. Like I feel like he's done the right things for this team uh, the past couple of years. He deserves a spot, and not only that, like, this kid's a great teammate. Again, I, I get to go to games, man. If you go look at the bench, even if you watch from home, just and he is on the team. Take a look at the bench. This kid is standing up the entire game, cheering for the teammates. Um, so from that perspective, also, it's a great locker room presence. Um, he's a bit older, so he kind of fits into that kind of seasoned vet in a way uh, for our roster. So I really hope that if it comes down to, man, like we, we don't know who to wave, okay, cut him, but make him a two-way. Don't just get rid of him altogether and send him back to yeah. Lakeman because that wouldn't be right. I agree because out of out of all the two-way players that we've ever had, um, I would I would say that Devin Kennedy is probably the one that we've at least invested the most in. Maybe not always from a two-way perspective, but – playing in Lakeland, him winning a championship in Lakeland, to him being on on the roster and helping us towards the end of the season, to to now him being able to get a full contract, you know, I, I would hate for any of that to go to waste. So I really hope that, you know, they they find a, a happy median and and figure it out. Um, now kind of transitioning into our mailbag. So this first question comes from Escoso Fresco, who asks, who will lead the Magic in each stat category? Points per game? rebounds per game and also assists per game i'm just gonna go as, as the names come to come to mind so points per game i'm gonna surprise you and i'm gonna say that would be wendell carter rebound rebounds per game that's also gonna be wendell carter <laughs> All assists right. per game that's gonna be wendell carter don't say, no, i'm kidding don't, i'm kidding <laughs> don't say that's gonna be markel faults if he is healthy enough to play the whole season so i got wendell wendell markel how about you? I think that this is definitely going to be a breakout year. Like if there if there's a most improved player, and, and not saying that you know he had a bad season last season because he was definitely one of the bright spots, but I think that he's going to have the biggest jump, in my opinion. I, I think that Wendell is is way more than what people see him as. With that being said, I am going points per game, Paolo, 
hundred percent. I think that a lot of the offensive schemes were really going to put the ball in Paolo's hands to either score, play make, whatever the case may be, because his ability to play make is so strong in his game. The basketball is going to be in his hands a lot. And I think that that may also impact Markel in a way, but this is what I would say. Paolo points per game. I would say Wendell, I agree with you, Wendell rebounds per game, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we also see Paolo leading with assists per game. True. Which would be crazy if you have a player that is able to lead the team in both points and assists. Um, But I can definitely see that. I would agree with you with Markel, but I just think that if you're going to try to maximize what you can out of Paolo, and I, I get that it's his freshman year and I get that, um, that it's 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 going to be really hard for a first player, whether it's a number one pick or not, to do as much as I believe is going to be asked of him. Um, I, I think that he's definitely ready for the challenge. I would put Paolo for points per game in assists. I think a name that we're, we may be forgetting of also is France. So are we going to see a lot of France at point forward like we saw towards the end of last season? Because if that happens, and you kind of keep alternating between France and, and Paolo kind of being – these guys that handle the ball, maybe one Markel's on the bench, then, hey, maybe France can pick up some easy assists, and now he may sneak in there. I, I think the ultimate thing is it comes down to health, right? If Markel plays the whole season, let's say 78 games, 75 games, I, I wholeheartedly believe that he's going to be the leader assist because he's going to have the ball in his hands. He's a great creator. He pushes the ball, the fast break. He's going to have the ball in his hands in that situation. So he, he has that. But if he's hurt, now you got to kind of recreate the wheel. Like yeah, who's going to handle so, the ball? So that's in that, and that was going to be my argument because the last thing that I want to see, if there's one thing that I don't want to see next year, I don't want to see point frauds not once. Not once do I ever want to see a point frauds because the only way that you're going to see a point frauds is if Cole Anthony is injured, Markell is injured, and you're stuck with Jalen Suggs, who's not all that healthy, right? That's the only way that you're going to see point frauds unless something drastically changes. But I really hope that's not the case. Like, I really hope no. that we don't see point fronts at all. So if that's the case, we have an issue. Yeah, I think that that's going to be the key for me next season. I just want to see a healthy team. I don't care if we win again 22 games, believe it or not. Like, I don't, I don't care. But I want to see this team young. I want to see this team go out there and play and stay healthy because that's when we play our best basketball. So ultimately, that will lead to more wins. But my point is, that's the key for us. We don't know what we have. We really don't because we haven't seen this team healthy over the past, what, two and a half, three years? we got to see that finally so we can make some decisions next season in the off season. If we can't, I don't know what to tell you. It's going to be rough. Yeah. And just to clarify, because I know how people are when they listen, right? It's not that I don't want to see point fronts at all. It's just primarily as the point. That's just not what I want to see. Anyways, moving on. To I, I was going to say, I was going to say to that point, as a secondary creator, meaning if you're running a play that ultimately gives the ball to him, he creates off the pick and yes. roll. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yes, but I get your point. You don't want to see him being the one bringing the ball up. Uh, yeah. You have Cole, you have Jalen, you have Markel Correct. for that. Paolo, Correct. to some degree. I got you. Correct. All right. So this one's coming from Tommy, my R3, who asks, if Markel is the starter, it's going to be the starter. If Markel is the starter, is this his final shot to prove to the Magic that he can be successful still? Is this really his last shot to kind of show that he can be the present and future point guard of this team? It's a tough question, but I, I'm going to have to say yes, at least with the Magic, right? He may have a future out there with Washington, with another team that wants to give him a shot, but the Magic have a decision to make. You know, you, as we talked about earlier, the offseason next season is a crucial one for us. We've got a ton of money to spend. We've got some contracts to hand out. If Markel proves that he cannot stay healthy, which again, that's the last thing we want. But if that is the case, as a front office, you got to say, hey, man, we tried. You know, we rehabbed him. We paid him well. We tried. We just didn't work out. Um, Again, the last thing I want to see. But that is my take. What about you? Um, I I think it really does come down to what you just said with him being healthy. But I think that what it also comes down to is is the development from Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs. Because you you take a look at Markel, and I love everything that Markel does. I hope that he's successful, and I hope that he is the president and the future of this basketball team. Um, but if he can't stay healthy, you have to ask yourself, all right, 
what's the direction that we're going? Because we, if we can't rely on you, and this goes for basketball, this goes for everyday life and work, this goes for anything. If we can't rely on you to 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 come to work, then we we have to be able to look elsewhere. And I feel like that's kind of, you know, the the I don't I don't want to necessarily say the mindset, but in in a way of of fate, in a sense, that's kind of the direction that we went with with Jonathan Isaac. If Jonathan Isaac plays and he's healthy, amazing, great addition. But if he doesn't, what's up, Powell? You ready? You ready to play? You got your Jordans on? Because it's next man up. And I think that that's what makes this, this season so unique um, is the fact that it's really, really going to be competitive. Practices are going to be competitive. You still have the dynamic of a Wendell Carter and, and Mo Bamba. You got the guards. You got... Uh, the 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 forwards and I think that every day is going to be a, a a battle on on the practice floor on on the game floor and I think that people are going to really have to compete for for their livelihood in a sense because you have a player like RJ Hampton that is still trying to prove himself you got a player like Jalen Suggs that is coming off an injury season where we're hoping that he stays healthy but we also want to see him improve and he has a chip on his shoulder Cole Anthony the exact same thing Markel, the exact same thing. So it's kind of like, who's going to be who's going to be the one that kind of takes takes it forward? Who's going to be the alpha? Who's going to be the one that makes the biggest leap? And I think that there's a lot of argument to me to be made for every single one of those players because either any any one of these players can be the one that bloats. Any single one can be the one that really skyrockets above the rest. It's just a matter of who is going to do that. And to kind of answer the question is if Markel can't stay healthy or if we see a major development from Cole Anthony or Jalen Suggs, then you can kind of sit back and ask yourself, all right, maybe maybe Cole Anthony or maybe Jalen Suggs fits best with Paolo because we now know that Paolo is is your main centerpiece. And if if it's more Suggs and Cole than it is Markel, then you have to make a decision. At the same time, I don't see that as the case. I do see Markel being – the best point guard on the team by far. And I think that from everything that we've seen, like towards the end of last season, I think he also has the, the opportunity to make the biggest. He might, he might end up being one of the best players on this team, you know, next season. And that's something that is a realistic option. Yeah. To make matters more interesting, I'm just looking here. So his full, his contract's guaranteed next season, 16 and a half million fully guaranteed the season after. So that would be 23, 24 season. $17 million contract, only $2 million out of that is guaranteed. So, to the question, to make things more interesting, if, say, he cannot stay healthy, or, like you said, call out, place him, Jalen sucks, I'll place him, you basically have a say at that point, say, hey, you know what, I'm going to wash my hands and say, you know what, thank you, Markel, but things that didn't work out, you can either trade him or waive him at that point. Again, the last thing we want to see as Magic fans, we want this kid to succeed here, to live up to the hype of that first round pick that he he was but years ago. We're just thinking worst case scenario because that's what we were asked. Um, but yeah, keep that in mind too. Also, that's the same year that J.I.'s contract is not guaranteed. So you got a Magic team here that can literally just wash their hands out of two of the most expensive players in Markel and J.I. if they wanted to after next season. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, so now now this next one. This one's coming from Jake.Smith2007 that asks, what is one trade that if you were Jeff Weltman, you would make? Honestly, it depends what the, the, the trade is out there, right? But if it was up to me right now as a fan, I don't have a trade I would make right now. I, I really want to see this team play. I really want to see what we got. I think the typical fan out there wants to hear maybe, hey, go for Donovan Mitchell. Go for broke and give this team a chance. Nah. Part of me wants to because I want to see this team back in the playoffs and really be guaranteed a playoff spot and not just hoping that we make the playoffs. But like everyone keeps saying, it is about a year to two years too early to, to cash in just yet. Um, so as much as I want to see that happen, no. But I will tell you, if a guy like Jalen Brown comes in the market and you have a chance to go get him and the Celtics say, hey, we want you to be a three-way partner in this trade with Brooklyn, the Nets, and the Magic, you end up getting Jalen Brown and the Steel because the Magic are doing something crazy, then yeah, that's a guy that I could say fit, fit in the timeline, 
he's like a, a great defender, can shoot, can score. But again, that's just me to say a trade. In reality, I don't want to trade. Yeah, a trade is coming. Like, let's let's be serious. A trade is coming. We got the Chicago pick. We have our pick next year. That's two additional rookies that will be added to this team, whether or not the Magic decide to keep it or not. A trade is coming. We It may not be before training camp. It may not be until the NBA trade deadline. It may not be until next season. But within the next year, I believe something has to happen because you have enough time to be able to evaluate. You have enough time to be able to see what pieces fit best with Paolo Bancaro because that that is really what – that is your centerpiece. That's what you're going to build around. You already have center blocks. You already know that Franz is part of your future. You already understand that, um, that hopefully – Hopefully, 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 Jalen Suggs is a part of that. So you already have your core main pieces that you're investing everything in. And I think that we're getting to a point where, and we've said it before, decisions need to be made. You can only have so many players on a roster. And I think that, you know, for the for the most part right now, I agree with you. There, there's not anyone that I would say, hey, we should try and trade for this player because I, I don't see that. You know, we've had we had this debate about Donovan Mitchell is that why would you trade so much for a guy that you really still don't know? Like, granted, Donovan Mitchell been playing all-star level basketball since he got into the league. But you also have NBA players out there that it took them a little while to be able to get to the level of success that they're at. You're still watering these these players that you have on your team. You're still hoping that Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs are able to make or take that next step. And I think that at the most part, it's only right that you find out what it is that you have with him. Because who knows? Now with the addition of Paolo, the fact that he's such an impressive playmaker, he's the type of player that's going to instantly make everyone better around him. <clears throat> he's going to be a type of player that you're going to have to play defense and respect him because he's going to destroy you down low. What does that do? That opens up the floor for everybody else. So, yeah, our shooting wasn't great last year. But now you have a player where it's going to open up the floor and maybe our shooting ability gets a little bit better. Maybe our shooting percentages increases. And I think that that's the part that I'm most interested into seeing whether or not really unfolds that way. 100% agree. I, I, I just want to see this team develop, see what they look like together on the court, see them fight for minutes, see them fight. What do they have? Who do we have on this roster? I can't, we can't answer the question yet. We haven't seen J.I. play. We haven't seen Markel play. Sucks. Missed most of last season. Franz did amazing. Can he keep that up? Wendell took a, a step forward. So did Mobamba. Can they replicate that and, and improve this season? So there's so many unanswered questions with our team right now. You don't want to give in on those guys just yet. Um, so again, my take, my, like you said, let's let things play out. I'm okay with that. Just realize that about a year from now, this team may look 100% different. Just because we have cap space, we have to consolidate. We have way too many players and picks incoming. Something's got to change. So realize this isn't coming up. It's really an evaluation year, but in reality, something is happening. It's kind of like two years ago when we traded Vooch and AG and, and Fournier. You knew it was coming. We were so excited for it. Understand, that's kind of what we're heading to in this rebuild. We're getting to the point now where get excited, get happy to see what's out there on the court, but do realize we're taking a step forward no matter what, 10 months, 11 months from now. Um, so there's just more than basketball on the court being... being uh, happening in Orlando. There's a lot happening with the building of this team, the shake of this roster that's going to happen over the next year or so. So be excited, Magic fans. Uh, a lot of good times coming up here for, for us. A lot of things to be excited about. Um, hopefully, hopefully we really do get a chance to see Paolo this Saturday. I would love to see him um, play out in that in that um, uh, Jamal Crawford um, crossover. Pro -M. Yeah, the crossover. Um, with that said, man, really good episode. I can't believe we were able to find some topics to, to discuss. Um, <laughs> really credit to you, Al. Thank you for being able to get a full hour with nothing going on. <laughs> um, but that's definitely a wrap for us uh, for today, and we'll catch you guys next week. 
Thank you for listening to the Ozone Podcast, the voice of Magic fans. For all the latest Orlando Magic news and updates, follow us on Twitter at the Ozone Pod and on Instagram at Orlando Magic HQ. Remember to subscribe and leave a five-star review on all your favorite podcast listening platforms.